Good morning, guys. I have a uh, rigged system here to be able to show you on the camera the textbook. So if you want to open to Article 29, that's what we will be covering, 29 and 30 day end of life issues. Before we begin, let's say a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we continue to ask your blessing on all these guys that they can learn better the values that will help us bring us in communion with each other as a human race through social justice and ultimately lead us to communion with you for eternity. We ask you to bless their families with health and prosperity and, of course, holiness. Lord, we ask these prayers in your name. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in Article 27 and 28, we talked about the beginning of life issues and culture of death and culture of life. Uh, as we move into Article 29, Pope John Paul II talked a lot about the whole issue of the uh, the paradox that societies around the world tend to spend a lot of time and effort reducing poverty and protecting workers' rights and human rights and racism and things like that, women's rights, workers' rights. But we, on the same time, are forgetting about life issues like abortion, euthanasia, capital punishment. And so... He, in this green section right here, points out that uh, we tend to deny this notion that we are created to be in communion with God, that if you look at the blue down here, that human beings tend to want to take control of their own lives and take everything into their own dominion. And so we have the right to, in a sense, control our own destinies because our destinies don't include eternal life, generally speaking. And so... Pope John Paul II reminds us that we are created in God's image, and therefore we have human dignity that must be respected from womb to tomb. And so, uh, though we respect our bodies with great reverence, because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, uh, we also know that our bodies are going to be resurrected to eternal life. And so it's with those two things we have to keep that in mind. Euthanasia is also called mercy killing. Sometimes it's called uh, physician-assisted suicide. But the point of it is here in the blue, you'll see that people have this notion that if they, in fact, uh, can control the pleasures of their life and seek those pleasures when you're absent those, in other words, when you have suffering and, and to some extent, a terminal uh, prognosis of your injuries or illnesses, then sometimes it's better to put yourselves out of misery, kind of like we do with dogs. And the church teaches that that's wrong. It's considered mur murder to uh, help somebody commit suicide. Again, we have to look at the moral consequences, the the object, the intent, and the circumstances surrounding that. And you cannot allow the circumstances to dictate the object. If the object is to kill somebody, regardless of their circumstances, it's still wrong. So we teach in the Catholic Church that somebody, uh, that the church should protect life until natural death. Uh, extraordinary measures need not be taken to protect that death. In other words, uh, naturally, people are going to die. And so medicine and, uh, and families need to consider that you do not have to go to extraordinary means to help somebody stay alive. And those extraordinary means can be financial. They can be uh, the imposition on society and even on a family, uh, but you can't participate in quickening someone's death uh, and helping them die sooner. Uh, we do have things called hospice programs, which are uh, nursing care that helps reduce pain and um, in some ways uh, makes it comfortable for a person to uh, live until they do die. It also supports the family of the person in that uh, condition. Suicide falls into the same category of end of life issues. And, and for the longest time, suicide was treated as uh, a condition that caused people's, uh, that they caused their own death and it was looked down upon by, by the church. We now know that there are a lot of reasons for suicide besides depression and chemical imbalance and such. And so we realize there's extraordinary circumstances going on. And so the church seeks mercy and seeks us to help people that are in a situation where they're contemplating uh, suicide. That's going to end this article. I will do one more for Article 25. Good day.